Hmm. So that's what I taste like. As long as we have our imagination. Wow, I never... Hey, what's going down guys? Jared Bronstein here and welcome back to a top 10 list here on Inform Overload. Make sure to follow the entire IO team on Instagram. Links are in the description down below. Hit that subscribe button and of course that bell notification. And of course, did I just say of course twice? Anyways, give us a good old thumbs up if you guys watched SpongeBob as a kid. I know I did. Obviously, it was a great show. What kid doesn't grow up watching SpongeBob? Now, I recently did a video on Life's Biggest Questions titled, What If SpongeBob SquarePants Was Real? So I felt it was only fitting that I covered this video on here. Now, let me say, I'm not here to ruin your childhood by any means. And if I do, I'm sorry, guys, but we gotta talk about the top 10 darkest SpongeBob SquarePants theories out there. I want to tell you guys it ruined my childhood. Well, there's no going back. Number 10. All the characters are addicted to different drugs. The theory here is that a handful of the main characters portray characteristics of someone who's on these specific drugs. SpongeBob is on some sort of hallucinogenic, LSD or shrooms possibly, which explains why he's always so happy and has a very big imagination. Patrick is always hungry because he's always stoned, and Mr. Krabs is on cocaine, which is why he's ill-tempered and seems to be paranoid. Lastly, we got Squidward, who is always down and depressed because, can you guess why? Well, apparently he's on heroin. You guys uncomfortable yet? I know I am, but buckle up because we're only on number 10. Number 9. Bikini Bottom is the result of nuclear testing. I mean, this one isn't really so much a stretch because there is some truth behind it. Bikini Bottom is actually named after Bikini Atoll, which is a part of the Marshall Islands. Located in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, thousands of miles away from Hawaii and Papua New Guinea, the US conducted 23 nuclear tests during the Cold War, more specifically between 1946 and 1958. In 1954, the US government dropped a massive hydrogen bomb, which they say was the equivalent to 1,000 sized Hiroshima bombs. Aside from the damage, it filled the island and surrounding areas with unfathomable amounts of radiation and the theory here is that Spongebob and his friends are mutant creations. Thanks to all that radiation of course. At number 8, Mr. Krabs is a cannibal. Krabby Patties are made out of crab! Well I mean, this one really doesn't need much of an explanation, does it? If you guys missed that clip at the beginning, we could roll it again right now so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Mm. So that's what I taste like. So that's what I taste like? Let's also not forget they're called Krabby Patties. Now, of course, they're named after Mr. Krabs, who owns the Krusty Krab, but then why would he say that's what I taste like? Seems a little strange if you ask me. We're all animals, boys and girls. Eating each other is what nature intended. And I wouldn't put it past the guy. I mean, he'll literally do anything for a buck, even if it's selling his own kind to others. Coming in at number seven. The characters are the seven deadly sins. I obviously did this one on purpose. I mean, why not, right? So what are the seven deadly sins? Lust, gluttony, greed, sloth, wrath, envy, and pride. Can you guys figure out which one belongs to who? According to fan theories, SpongeBob is lust because he's obsessed with getting his driver's license. Patrick is obviously sloth because, well, he's lazy and pretty much sleeps all day. Squidward has a deep hatred for SpongeBob and Patrick, and really anything fun, so he's most definitely wrath. Sandy would be pride because she's always bragging about how great Texas is, while Mr. Krabs is obviously incredibly greedy. Then we got Plankton who's obsessed with stealing Mr. Krabs formula. Sounds pretty envious if you ask me. And then there's Gary, SpongeBob's pet snail who doesn't stop eating. Do you guys know what the definition of gluttony is? I quote, habitual greed or excess in eating. Oh, okay. And the wild card could be Mr. Krabs' daughter as well, Pearl, who's also boy crazy, an attribute we could also say is considered lust. In at number six. The episode about sex. In the show's first season, there's an episode that sees SpongeBob and his girl pal Sandy obsess over karate. So much so, SpongeBob ends up getting fired from his job for doing too much karate at work. Don't worry, eventually he gets rehired. But people say if you replace karate with sex, it puts things into perspective. An example would be in the episode when SpongeBob is watching TV and Sandy tries to attack him with her karate gloves. SpongeBob decides to fight back, but before he puts on his gloves and headgear, he says, I'm not making this up, he says it in the show, you can look it up, safety first. It's kind of weird, but I mean, he's talking about fighting, so I get it. SpongeBob then tries to do karate over the phone with Sandy, and later in the episode, they start doing it in public. Karate, that is, which appears to be a nuisance to the general public. You see where I'm going with this? Number five. Speaking of sex, let's talk about Squidward's face. Why am I doing this to myself? The theory here is that Squidward's big nose is really his pecker. And thinking about it, unlike most of the characters in the show, Squidward never wears pants. Why would that be? Although many think Squidward is a squid because, well, why wouldn't he be with a name like that? He's He's actually an octopus, and octopuses have a reproductive organ near their head, which is why they mate face to face. I grew up loving this show, and now I'm really regretting scripting this video in the first place because it's making me believe my entire childhood was a lie. Number four. 
SpongeBob is about Germany before World War II. The theory here is that Squidward is a failed artist who dreams of a better life one day, which is very similar to that of Adolf Hitler. He despises SpongeBob, who many say represent the Jewish people, and SpongeBob's pal Patrick is a representation of the innocent German people who were oblivious to everything that was going to happen. To go even further into this theory, people claim Sandy represents America, which is why she's so proud of her heritage, and tries to save SpongeBob from Squidward's antics. And Mr. Krabs is the rest of Europe who looked down on Hitler and the Nazis during the war. Number three. SpongeBob was gay and was made to have young kids watching question their sexuality and possibly commit crime. More specifically, in the Ukraine. I can't make this stuff up, guys, I swear, this is the theory. A right winged and religiously affiliated organization called the National Commission for the Defense of Morals claims SpongeBob was a threat to children. Apparently, a psychologist by the name of Irina Medavida, who I think is also an actress and producer and a bunch of other things, so. Sure, she's a psychologist. Believe SpongeBob, among other children's shows such as the Teletubbies, Pokemon, and Mash and the Bear, led to them becoming homosexuals and criminals. Or stupid. We're talking about a children's show here, guys. I think this alleged psychologist needs to see one herself, if I'm being honest with you guys. Number two. Every character in the show has a mental illness. Much like The Seven Sins and the theory that every character is on drugs, this one also involves all the main characters of the show. SpongeBob has an anxiety disorder, Patrick is bipolar, which is why he randomly gets mad at SpongeBob, Squidward is a narcissist, which is why he talks down to his neighbors and acts like he's the best. Then you got Plankton, who's a sociopath because his goal in life is to take down his competition, Mr. Krabs, who is also apparently a psychopath. And that's most likely because he sells Krabby Patties for a living. I mean, it's a little far fetched, but if you really think about it, guys, some of these theories, they got some, uh, what word am I looking for here, Chris? Base? They got some, they got some, uh, that. I don't know what I'm looking for, guys, but they got something. And finally, number one. This show is for adults. I haven't watched SpongeBob for a little while, but making this video, I watched a few clips here and there, which made me realize there's a lot that went over my head as a kid. But now watching it, you can pick up on some sexual innuendos and just overall inside jokes. Well, we'll call them that, that a parent would pick up if he or she was watching the show with their kid. Sandy's name is Sandy Cheeks, which is what would happen if you had sex on a beach. Then there's the time SpongeBob had underwear on his head with his nose popping straight out. If you're a guy, I think you'll get the joke. It usually happens when you wake up in the morning. And that does it for the top 10 dark SpongeBob SquarePants theories. It's called morning wood. <laughs> you guys gotta let me know if I missed any. I know there's a ton out there, but these 10 seem to be the most absurd if you ask me. And I'll probably never look at SpongeBob the same. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this one because it's just ruined a lot for me. Of course, you guys gotta let us know your thoughts by giving us a thumbs up if you guys liked it. Drop us some comments down below. Letting me know if you guys agree or disagree with my list on here. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. I've been your host, Jared Bronstein. And for those of you guys that don't know why I said each number the way I did, well, you gotta watch an episode of SpongeBob. I was just making fun of the guy that says, two minutes later. We'll see you guys in the next one.